There's no question for me, as a doctor, um, as a teacher, as someone who's been working in very difficult conditions, that solar energy can save lives. A doctor can't work without electricity and energy and diagnosis. Not that I know. I mean, there's some romantic notions of a country doctor heading out with a bag. That's not a very good way to take care of lots of patients. You need diagnostic capacity, you need light to examine a patient. You really do need electricity to do the kind of work we're doing. And that's true whether you're in the mountains of Lesotho or Haiti, or whether you're in a city in the United States. In, in a place like Bukan Kare, you know, first of all, we don't even have a bridge yet over the, the river. We will soon, God willing. So transporting large amounts of fuel necessary to power generators, clinic, hospital, schools, is very difficult logistically. And especially during the rainy season, it's difficult. There are um, times, in, and this is true in parts of Africa where we worked as well, uh, the mountains of Lesotho, for example. How are you going to get fuel up into those mountains? The roads are either absent or treacherous. You know, in, you know, it's very difficult to fly it on small planes. Really a, a huge logistic challenge as well. And then when you get very large and start having thousands of employees and seeing uh, millions of patients in several countries, you start thinking, what is the eff effect on the environment of the way that we're powering these hospitals, clinics, schools, diagnostic facilities? What, what is the impact? It was my, my older daughter who said, so what's the size of our carbon footprint? I said, well, what's a carbon footprint? And she had learned it in school. You know, that's a serious question for a, a multinational NGO, especially a social justice NGO. We know that environmental degradation is going to affect people living in poverty first, so it's a social justice issue, in our view, to have a, you know, a, an environmentally friendly way of powering these facilities. Given that you can't really do modern medicine without power and that modern medicine is able to save lives and that we need a safe and environmentally friendly alternative, that brings us to solar power. It has unique advantages as far as I can tell as a layperson of, you know, it's sitting there, you don't have to replenish, the sun replenishes it and that's what happens, right? Solar power, the sun beats down upon it and it works. I don't really need to know more than that. One of the ways we were able to move this forward was in our work in Rwanda. First, where we you know, challenged uh, self to, okay, you figure out how to put solar panels for these health centers, and they did. So here we are in Haiti. The whole notion of Partners in Health is built on partnership. We found an ideal partner in self because you know, my, my message to self was, wait, you guys need to do the energy work, we'll do the medical and education work. The approach taken by self is to engage local people to learn how to service the, the, the system, the whole system, from the panels to the, the way that the energy is stored and dispersed. And it's just very impressive to go back a year after seeing it installed, two years after seeing something installed, and see it still running. We're looking for supporters to render a huge and complex operation carbon neutral. So that requires an upfront investment, but we should go through in 10 countries and say what's the, the most uh, honorable, sustainable, smart way to, to power uh, this operation. And at the same time, we, I think we should say what is the manner that is most constant with the social justice mission that we feel is central to the work. Thank you.